Hey, ballers. How are we doing? <laughs> having a good time? You having a good time? Yeah, he's having a good time. All right, so my name is uh, Gabe Scholes. I'm coming from Vancouver. Um, I'm going to be talking about RxJS with React applications. Um, Andrew Clark sort of already touched on this, but we're just going to get into a little bit more detail. And so in order to talk about this, we first need to talk about what an observable is. And I think the easiest way is to talk about it in the context of a promise, because they have a similar abstraction. And so with a promise, right, we know that this is a uh, wrapper around a single asynchronous operation. And when it resolves, we can pass that along to all of our subscribers. Uh, but we can only ever do this one time. Well, an observable is just a wrapper around an asynchronous stream of values. So um, you can think of this as, like, say, an event handler or a web socket or a web worker or something like that. And so rather than just a single value, we pass on many values to all of our subscribers. And then at some point, we say that we're done. Um, now, in addition to this, uh, RxJS allows us to apply various transformations to observables. These transformations are immutable, so they always return a new observable. And like based on my little example here, you can see that um, they all follow from another, uh, each other. So here we have like a click event observable, and every time those get passed down the chain, so you get the stream until you get a desired result. And finally, um, observables are also composable. So here we have two buttons. And uh, every time we click on the top button, uh, we're going to take that event, and we're going to map it to a plus one. And every time we click on the bottom button, we're going to map that to a negative one. And then we're going to merge them together so that we have these two streams of plus ones and minus ones. And we're going to create a brand new stream of just plus ones and minus ones. It's a single stream. And then the last one, we're doing that reduce, where we keep a running count. And you'll notice that this reduce, this, this number that we're keeping track of, is uh, without side effects. So um, here, it follows from the button clicks. So the button clicks directly affect. We're not dispatching some event. We're, we're directly um, composing a stream in order to uh, update the sum. And then so if you really want to uh, understand the power of observables, uh, here's an example that's a little bit more useful. So we start by uh, tracking mouse events, but only when a mouse down event happens. And then we only want to take uh, one of those events per second and then only take them until a mouse up happens. So like this, this is a nightmare in vanilla JS, right? We it's, don't even bother trying to do this. Uh, RxJS is like four lines. It's fantastic. Right, and so it turns out, you know, RxJS and React, they pair pretty well together, I find. Um, and so inside of our React component, you know, we could use an observable, and we could use that to handle all of our uh, event handling. And so at the top, we have this thing called a subject, and a subject is just an observable that exposes uh, that push API, so being able to call next, um, but we expose that publicly. Um, and then uh, what we do, like the previous example, we, we click buttons, we push in plus ones or minus ones, and then we keep a running count. And then every time we get a new count, we just update, uh, we call set state. Um, but there's a problem with this. Um, it gets a, this is going to get a little bit sloppy, because now React is not the only thing that is uh, maintaining our state for us. If someone were to come along and insert a button called reset that automatically just calls set state and sets the count to zero, um, if I had pressed plus 20 times before that, and then I press reset, and then I press plus again, well, my total is now going to be 21. It's not going to be 1. Um, so what we can do is we can take that uh, observable behavior and pull it out of the component so that we get a pure, pure component. So we just have a function. Uh, we're calling a clicker here. And um, what's important is, is what I've highlighted in blue there, um, and, and that's that count, the stream that we get from count, which is this running total, um, all of the behavior to describe this uh, is right there. It's right in front of us. And if we really wanted to create that reset button, uh, we would need to create uh, an observable to maybe wrap this and then set the count to zero or, or reset it to, to zero. So we have to directly do that. There are no side effects involved here. So uh, yeah, should I, should I use RxJS with React? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of considerations. Um, can come talk to me afterwards. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person at this conference wearing a dope fruit shirt. <laughs> so, uh, so one thing is like the learning curve, right? It's like pretty high. So y you'll have to uh, definitely take the time to learn it. It is very much worth it. Like, uh, 
totally changed the way that I thought about writing JS. Totally recommend it. But it might be overkill, right? Like, why not just use vanilla event handlers in my in my code? Um, a lot of the time, you know, you get problems with your components because they're just too big, and making those set state calls all over like a 700 line component is is you know a nightmare. Hopefully, you do a good job of maintaining that, but you know, we we all don't, or some of us don't. Um, so like 99% of the time, if you don't have this crazy observable streams that depend on each other, then uh, you know vanilla JS is fine. Didn't really have a chance to talk about this. Uh, Andrew Clark sort of touched on this, but um, it, it is sometimes a, a good alternative to Redux. Cool story, Gabe. Thank you very much.